When you run out of M.2 slots on your motherboard, there's really only a couple options. You can move over to one of those high-end workstation platforms like AMD Threadripper and try and find a motherboard that's got a lot of connectors on it. Or you can take the more affordable and reasonable approach and just try and use an adapter card with your existing system. Today we're taking a look at an adapter from Easy DIY Fab. For $30, it'll give you an M.2 connector for an NVMe drive and one for a SATA drive. So that allows you to put two drives into an existing system. And it's also got some addressable RGB lighting and a heatsink to provide some cooling. Let's check it out. The adapter comes in a plain black cardboard box that says Easy DIY Fab. Right on the top when you open the package, there's a little one-page user's manual. It shows a labeled list of all the parts that come in the box, and there's some really basic instructions on how to get it installed. The adapter card's sealed in some anti-static material to help keep it safe until you're ready to use it. And underneath this little cardboard insert, we have some cables and other accessories. This small package has some thermal pads, a mounting screw, and a tiny screwdriver. We've got a three pin, five volt ARGB cable that you'll need if you wanna control the RGB. This is an adapter cable for connecting the RGB to Gigabyte motherboards. And finally, we've got a standard SATA cable. So let's take a close up look at this adapter. First of all, it feels really solid in your hands and it's actually kind of heavy. And there's no loose parts or any rattling sounds or anything like that. It seems like it's pretty well made. The heatsink has some grooved aluminum fins that are gonna help dissipate some of the heat from the drives beneath. And there's a continuous LED light bar around the perimeter of the card. To get the install process started, first we need to remove the heatsink so that we can get our drives onto the adapter. This is done by removing four screws on the back of the adapter card. With these screws removed, the heatsink should come right off and we'll just set that aside for now. Now this is a dual adapter card designed for an NVMe drive and a SATA drive. The NVMe slot is the one closest to the PCI Express connection, and the SATA slot is obviously the other one that's closest to the SATA connection on the adapter. And just over here, we have the connection for the ARGB cable that'll enable the lighting controls. And the bracket also has a small sync button for syncing and changing the lighting. This adapter comes with the mounting screws that you need to install the drives, and that's awesome because there are some adapters out there that don't come with any mounting hardware, and that can be really frustrating. So let's get these screws removed so we can start setting up our drives. The SATA drive that I'm using is a Western Digital Blue 500 gigabyte drive. These are really popular and affordable, and I'll link all this stuff down in the description of the video. And the NVMe drive is a Samsung 970 EVO with one terabyte capacity. All we have to do is line up the connector on the drive with the M.2 slot on the adapter, and then it should just gently slide into place. And these slide in on an angle and not necessarily flat or flush with the board. It's the screw at the back that holds the drive down to the adapter. Now let's do the same thing with our SATA drive, and then we can gently hold the drives down and secure them into place with the included screws. In order to get the back side of the heatsink to make contact with our drives, we need to cover each drive with one of the included thermal pads. Before installation, make sure you remove the plastic film on both sides of the pads, and then all you have to do is place them down onto your drives. And now we can reinstall the heatsink by aligning it with the screw holes and placing it down onto the adapter. Then flip it over and secure it with the four screws that we removed earlier. Before I install the card into the computer, I'm just gonna connect the SATA and the ARGB cables. And I recommend doing this before installation cause it's gonna be a lot harder after. Then we can insert the adapter into a free PCI Express four times or greater slot and connect the cables to the motherboard. And now we can boot into Windows and use our drives. And just a quick note for anyone using brand new drives that haven't been formatted before, just make sure you go into Windows Disk Management and initialize each of the new drives so that the operating system is able to recognize them. Now the important thing here is that we're getting the rated speeds on our drives even though we're using them through an adapter. To test that, I ran Crystal Disk Mark on each of the drives and compared the results to the manufacturer's specifications. The Samsung 970 EVO came in right where it should be, but the Western Digital SATA drive tested a little low. But I did retest it with the drive installed directly on the motherboard and got the same result. So that confirms that it's not the adapter causing the lower speeds and it's actually just the drive itself topping out at those particular speeds. And I think that makes sense because this is actually a pretty old drive that I've had kicking around for a while. For anyone wondering if you can install Windows 10 on one of these adapted drives, the answer is yes. I tested the install process. It went all the way through, worked perfectly. I was able to boot into Windows and use it just like I would if the drive were installed directly into the motherboard. Now let's take a look at the RGB lighting. On my Asus motherboard, all I had to do was press the sync button on the adapter bracket once, and it instantly started working with Asus Aura Sync. With one click, I was able to get any of the lighting effects to work, and the LEDs on this thing are actually really bright, and they add a nice touch to your system build. Right now, I'm using Asus motherboard 
motherboards and all of my systems, so I can't really test this on anything else, but I can't imagine there'd be any issues with syncing the lighting on any other motherboards from the major brands. So I guess that's it here. There's really not a whole lot more to say about this thing. It works, it looks good, it's easy to install, and best of all, it's affordable. I'm gonna put the purchasing links down in the description of this video for the adapter and for the drives that I use. So make sure you check those out if you're interested and make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss any upcoming content. And we'll see ya.